Hi there, welcome to the new part of this series. Today in this part we are going to learn about the jagged array. This is also another form of array. So in this part we will be learning all about the jagged array. Let's start. Let's have a look what we are going to learn in this video. We will learn what are jagged array, what kind of data we can store in jagged array. In my previous two videos you have learned how can we store single dimension array and how can we store multi dimension array. Now in this video we will see what special data we are going to store in the jagged array. How to work with jagged array. It means we will perform few operations on the jagged array just like the getting the data, setting the data, also applying the for each loop, all these things we will learn how to work with the jagged array. Another important working with multi dimensional array in jagged array. This concept I will teach you in the later part of this video section. This is also important part of the jagged array. And lots of things about the jagged array you are going to learn in this video. Before learning about the jagged array, let's see what type of data we are going to store in jagged array. What is the need of jagged array? In the previous part of this tutorial, you have learned how to store a table into the two dimension array. So, in this type of data, the number of rows and column were fixed. In the entire table, you will see that number of row and columns are fixed. But this may not be the ideal scenario in all the time. Suppose you are working with some list of companies and those companies manufacture cars. For each company, there may be different number of models of car. So suppose for company A, there may be five number of models. For company B, there may be seven number of models. For company C, there may be two model of cars. So if you have to work with that type of data, let's have a look this type of data. Then what will you do? Because this will not work in the multi-dimension or 2D array. For this type of data, you need something special, which is jagged array. Here in this example, you can see that the number of rows are fixed, which is four, but number of columns are not fixed because in the first row there are four columns in the second row there are two columns in the third row there are three columns so we can say that the number of rows are fixed but number of columns are not fixed if you need to work with this type of data then you have to learn about the jagged array now let's focus what is jagged array jagged array is an array of arrays Okay. It means if we combine multiple arrays at a single place, that is called jagged array. All the elements of jagged array are array. Just create a picture in your mind that you are working with a single dimension array. And that single dimension array has three elements. The numbers are 1, 2, 3. Now, if instead of 1, I need to store an another array over there, how it will look like? So for each element, I have to store an another array. Then this is how the jagged array will look like. The array elements can be of different size. So since we are working with multiple arrays at the same time, so each array can be of different dimension. Now let's have a look all these things in the practical way and let's create a demo. To create a demo, first of all, we have to create an application. And since I'm working with .NET Core 3.0, so we can create a console application using the console, using the command line. To create a new project, we can use .NET, new. We have to provide the type of the application, which is console in our case. We can give it a meaningful name. So suppose, child array project. Let's go inside the project folder, which is jagged array. And now we have to open the code in the Visual Studio code, which is our editor code space dot press enter. Here you can see we got the project. We have the program dot CS file. We have the CS pros file. Now let's open the program file and in the program file, it's time to learn how can we declare a jagged array. Let's see. Just like any other type, first of all, we have to provide the type of the array. 
if you are working with the integers or the string or any other type you have to write that type and suppose i'm working with the integers now so i'll write int okay after the int you have to create a square box okay this is very basic all these things we have already done in the previous part of this tutorial session but for the jagged array you have to create one more square bracket like this okay and then you have to give it a meaningful name suppose i'm writing it numbers you can write any meaningful name as per your requirement and that's it that's how you can declare a jagged array in dotnet now we have to learn how can we initialize a jagged array to initialize it you can initialize it in the same line while you are declaring it or you can initialize it in another line just like this numbers is equal to new you have to write int box and one more square box and the important point here is that you have to provide number of rows while you are initializing it okay suppose in my scenario i have three rows and because number of rows are fixed and number of columns are not fixed that's why i'm writing only the rows not the columns okay that's how you can initialize your array just think it like this just consider this part as a type okay so this is something special type and after that special type i'm writing a square bracket and numbers so we can say that we are creating an array of something special type okay and same here we are creating numbers so we can think numbers like this over here since we are providing three over here for the elements for each element we can create another array before assigning the values let's see what are the default values available inside this array this is important point to understand let's put a breakpoint over here and let's press f5 okay so this is great just see just have a look on the array the size is 3 and we are not sure about the column so the number of column is not visible over there the important point to learn is that it is saying all the values null 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 but in the previous part we learned that the default values of the array are the type but in this scenario since all the element will be a new array so that array will be of reference type that's why the default value of the reference is null hence null is available on all the index so for the index 0 because we haven't created any new array now let's create the child array which means the element array for this jagged array and to create the child array we can write the name of the jagged array and we can provide the index so suppose for the index 0 i am creating a new array of size 5 okay great now let's put the breakpoint and let's press f5 let's see what are the changes in the jagged array here you can see for the first index which is 0 an array of size 5 which is type of integer is assigned and let's see the default values of this array here we can see that the inner array which has size of 5 has all the 5 elements and the default value of 5 elements is 0 since this is an array of integer that's why the default value of integer is assigned to it but on the index 1 and 2 of the jagged array the value is still null why this because we haven't created any new array for these elements now let's create few more child elements for the jagged array and here we can provide one index here we can provide two index and the size may be different so i can give it two or i can give it three like that okay now let's press f5 now you can see that the jagged array has three index which is 0 1 2 and all the index all the elements have a different array that's why we say that jagged array is an array of arrays since we have three arrays so it is an array of arrays so he says the first one has five elements all the default values the second one has two elements both have the default values similarly the third array has three elements and all of them have default values 
that's how we can declare an object array and we can initialize a object array now it's time to assign few values to this object array so there are multiple ways so just consider this as a separate one dimension array how can you declare value in the di one dimension array all you have learned in the previous part of this video section that's how you can assign the values or you can simply write it like this new int and the number of elements okay similarly you can assign the values to the second array also so suppose it is one one comma one two for the third one let me declare few values also suppose it is two one and two two okay there are three elements so we have to provide one more element over there let's press f5 now in the numbers we have three elements let's see the values for the first one we have all the values which we have assigned in the first array for the second we have both the values this is correct for the third one we have all the three values which we have assigned in the third array now let's see one more way to assign the values to the jagged array okay instead of writing the in number and the zero the name of the array and the index we can make it very simple okay how to do that let's see so for the time being i'm just commenting this complete code okay and here you can create the curly bracket and uh, you can provide the semicolon over there and here you can write your values directly like this okay this is the first one comma second one and we can write this one also the third one this is another way to assign the values to the jag array and if i press f5 let's see the values which are available in the array you can see all the values are still available and this is working fine as expected okay since you are providing all the data while you are initializing it so there is no need to write this three also dot net will calculate this number automatically and will assign the number of rows to the jag array let's see so if i press f5 again still the length of the array is 3 okay which is correct to make it more simple there is one more way and for that you have to assign the values while you are declaring it okay where you are declaring the object array here so if we do it like this let me remove this complete part and like this so i have just declared the value over there and assign few other values here this is the simplest way to declare an object array and assign the values to that object array. Let's press F5 and see the values over there. So this is correct. Now we have learned about how to declare the object array, how to initialize the object array and how to assign the values to the object array. Now it's time to print those values. It's time to read those values from the object array. The first way was to read the values with the help of index okay let's write it something like this console dot right line and suppose i need to read the first value from the second row okay how to do that so numbers and in the first square bracket i can provide the index of the row which from which we have to fetch the value suppose i have to fetch the value from the second row and the index of the second row is one so i have written one over there and which value from the second array suppose i need to fetch the second value okay which is which has the index one what will be the value so what is the second row this is the second row and what is the second value this is the second value 12 should be the output if i press f5 and let's see the changes in the console let me scroll it a little bit okay so you can see 12 is here on the console this is our debug console and you can see 12 is there so that's why this is the first way to read the values from the jagged array using the index what if you need to read all the values from the jagged array for that we can use for loop okay so let's create a for loop 
and in the for loop we have to get the number of rows of the numbers and the number of rows which is also the length of the numbers can be determined with the help of length property of array and to use the length property first we have to write the name of the checked array which is numbers dot length okay so like this we can get the length of the jacked array and now since we got the first one now we have to work with the internal arrays since we have three arrays internal we have to work with that so to work with that array we have to use one more for loop so here we can write the j and for the j j will represent the first array okay the second array and then the third array now let's focus on the first array we have to read the values from this first array we can fetch the first array with the help of the name of the jagged array and the first index because this is available at the first index so i can simply write numbers and i can provide the first index since we are having an outer loop and the values of the i will be from 0 to 2 so we can write simply i over there and then dot length like this we will get all the arrays one by one so the outer loop will work from 0 to 2 so while it will work for 0 then here we will see that the number 0 it means the first array number number is basically the name of the jacked array and i is the first index so number 0 it means the first one and length so the, this inner loop will work for this array now and now we have to print the values to print the values we can write console dot write and to display the values numbers or we can write i and to read the values from this inner array we have to write the index of the inner array so which is j correct and to make it readable let's add a tab over there and since the value of the one array will be displayed now we have to go to the another line we have to go to the next line and to go to the next line we can write console dot right line simply like this that's it now let's press f5 let me delete this part and let me remove the breakpoint so let's press f5 now so here you can see on the console screen we have all three arrays so for the first one we have all the values from the first for the second we have all the values from the second and for the third we have all the values from the third array which is working fine also to make it very simple you can do it like this also so you can assign this array to some another array you can write it like this and here you can assign this number of i okay and now you can use this inner array in these loops so like this that this will also works in the same manner so let's understand one more time we have one for loop this for loop is for all the rows of the jagged array since the number of rows are 3 so we have written a loop from 0 to 2 and this will be calculated dynamically automatically with the help of length property so if you have few more rows in the jagged array that will also be handled automatically and if you need to fetch the first array how can we do that number and zero so number and the zero index will represent this entire array because this is the first element of this array and to read the first element we can simply provide the index of the first element and the index of the first element is zero so to read the first array we have to provide the zero index which is given over here so we have written zero index and since we are applying the number and the zero index it will give us the first array and we have assigned that array to the new variable which is inner array okay now we are simply applying the operation on the one dimension array that's it the loop will go on and then we will get the second array then the third array and so on jagged array with multi dimension because all the elements of jagged array are also array okay so since from the previous example we understand that all the elements of jagged array are array what if we have multi-dimension array 
as the element of jagged array. Right now we were using only single dimension array as the element of the jagged array. What if the requirement is that we have to use multi dimension array as the element of the jagged array? What will you do? Let's understand that part also. So for that let's make few changes in our existing jagged array. So if I'm writing it like this, I'll tell you from the beginning. Okay, let me remove this part as of now and now since we have to provide the number of rows suppose number of row is 3 and here as a second array this is the child element and for the child element earlier we were using single dimension array so we were not passing anything over there now we have to make it two dimension so we have to use comma here and since we are writing comma over here we have to update the type of the jagged array also like this so that's how you can declare and jagged array whose elements will be two dimension. Now this jagged array will have three rows and all the three rows will have two dimension array as the element. How to assign the values? Let's see. So simply first we can assign the value with the help of numbers and the index. So for the zero, we can create new int. And here we can provide the number of rows and number of columns so suppose for the first element the number of rows and columns are 3 comma 2 also we can provide the values to assign the values how can we do that so since we have three rows so i can provide it like this so this is the first row comma 3 comma 4 if you don't know about the 2d array or multi-dimension array you can watch the previous part of the series where we have learned everything about the multi-dimension and two dimension array so five comma six this is very simple that's how you can create the first element of this jagged array we have to make another also so numbers and the second index which is one and now int i can give any number of rows and column as per my requirement so suppose here the number of rows are two and the number of columns are three okay let's let's assign the values over here and so suppose the number of rows are two but number of columns are three like this and if you need to assign the third row also then we can provide the second index over there and suppose it has two rows and two columns great just like this so we have created a jagged array whose elements are of multi-dimension now let's see how to display these values on the console so to display it we have to make few changes in the in the for loop first we have to work here and since the inner array will have the number of rows and columns so here we can apply the logic which we have already done in the previous part of this video session so where we were using the get length method So this get length method is used to get the number of rows from this inner array. So this will give us the number of rows and here we can write one more for loop. And now we can write the inner array dot get length. To get the number of rows we can provide one over here and now we can simply print the values console dot write okay and to print the values what we can do we can use inner array and j comma k and to make it more readable let's add a tab over here okay to go to the next line we can simply write console dot write line here and that's it let's press f5 and let's see what are the changes on the console screen now let's verify the result from the values which we have already assigned in the jagged array so for the first array the values are 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have first row which has 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 so this is these are the elements from the first one 
then for the second array we have two rows and three columns one two three are the values for the first row one two three which is correct four five six these are the values for the second row four five six this is also correct and for the third one we have two rows and two columns which is correct two rows and two columns let's verify the values the first row has one comma two one and two are the values for the first row for the second row the values are four and five four and five that's how you can work with the multi-dimension array in jagged array and all the way that we have learned for the assigning in the jagged array will also be applicable for this multi-dimension array also so simply we can do it like this and now we have to remove the semicolons and also we have to remove this part that's also you can assign the values which have multi-dimension arrays and similarly we can remove this part also and this is the simplest form to assign the values to the child array which has the multi-dimension array so in this example we were using two dimension array as the child element for this jagged array if you need to work with the more dimensions they can, then you can also provide the more dimension, dimensions by providing the commas over here and similarly you can update the values for the child that's all in this part thank you for watching don't forget to like the button of the video please tell me your feedback in the comment section share these videos and please subscribe the channel thank you for watching have a great day